Well, folks, I'm excited to welcome our newest sponsor and maybe our biggest sponsor to The Shuley Show, Rustic Cuts. What is Rustic Cuts? It's basically your go-to for naturally raised beef. They're out of Iowa. Man in charge, his name's Rick. He's got 7 million acres and owns every cow in friggin' Iowa. They're all his. This meat is aged 21 days before going straight to your table. I've had other meat companies send out packages. Believe me when I tell you, none of them come close. Between the size and the quality of this meat, you will not be disappointed. And here's what I love the most about Rustic Cuts. They approached me and they said to me, Shuli, we want to be the Steven Singer of The Shuli Show. And I told him you came to the right place, because I know my fans. You guys are rabid, you're loyal, and you support every sponsor we have. You go on their website, rusticcutscb, like cbradio.com. You'll see a section just for The Shuli Show. You'll see every item named after The Shuli Show. You use promo code SHULI, you get 10% off, you get free shipping, and we get to show them that The Shuli Show is the place to be when it comes for advertising your product. Not to mention, if enough of you buy the Get Lenny Some Action package, we will finally be able to kill off his virginity forever. So just go to the site, rusticcutscb.com. Enter in promo code SHULI, S-H-U-L-I. And that's the hard part. The rest is easy. Grill and enjoy. If you love the show, if you love ESO, if you love the shoes team, now's your chance to show it. These guys believe in us, and I believe in you. And let's all believe in each other, right, guys? Shut up, nerd. All right. But in all seriousness, man, you're listening to this because you believe in me, you believe in the show. You know the motto of The Shuley Show. Hope is for suckers. Belief is everything. I was saying that shit long before Ted Lasso stole it. Rick at Rustic Cuts blew my mind with how down he is with this show. Now let's blow his mind and each other. Let's blow each other and show him that he made the right choice. Rustic Cuts CB, like CBRadio.com. Promo code SHULI, S-H-U-L-I. Pick yourself up a package. Purchase the Get Lenny Some Action Bundle. You're going to get four New York 12-ounce steaks, four 14-ounce ribeye, Two fillets, eight ounces each, 12 hamburger patties. I've had all of this. I'm fat. It's delicious. RusticCutsCB.com, promo code Shuli. Rustic Cuts, you rule. Let's get back to the show. The Shuli Show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition or episode of The Shuley Show. Uh, I have a very special guest here today. Uh, uh, you know, this is against the grain of what I normally do. This person does not have cerebral palsy. Uh, she is not a wrestling fan. Uh, she doesn't dream of doing the weather uh, with her life. Um, although maybe she does. I don't know. We haven't gotten into that part yet. But she's a fascinating human being that I've met uh, through my wife. Please welcome to the Shuli Show, uh, Rudrani Devi. Rudrani, welcome. Hello. I'm taking a bow. What a nice introduction. We are very well. Girl, so I've already been there, done that. Well, listen, I want to talk to you because you uh, are, I mean, you look up the word fascinating in the dictionary and there should be a picture of you because you're all over the map with so many things, uh, so many skills, so many stories, which is what I'm a big fan of. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Uh, let me just give some some credits here of who you are. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're talking to a shaman, first of all. Hello. Don't squeeze the shaman. Does that apply <laughs> to you guys as well? Sorry, did I mention this is a dumb comedy show? I love it. Okay, uh, you're descending from uh, generations of gifted women within your family lineage. You are considered a medical intuitive in the healing community. You heal. That's what we're talking about here. Uh, vibrational healer. Mine ran out of batteries, by the way. My vibrational <laughs> healer. 
uh, through the National Institute of Health in Boulder, Colorado. She's a certified access consciousness facilitator. You don't know what that means. Neither do I, but we're going to find out. And she specializes in access bars. She teaches it. Now, the access bars I'm familiar with now because my wife does them. And I tell you, I've never had better naps in my life. I wake up refreshed, and I don't know what she's doing with her witchy powers, but it's helping. I like it. Um, you are a best-selling author. You, your latest book, Choosing Happiness, An Uncommon Way to Find Joy in Your Life. Boom. Look at this. Uh, before the pandemic, you were also performing with local bands in Nashville. You got your own band. Uh, number one Reverb Nation funk artist. Hello. Wake the funk up. Is this enough credits for you people? She's all over YouTube. She's she's got her you got your own podcast. You got it all. So now that we got everything out of the way, everybody knows you're king shit of fuck mountain around here, and nobody's gonna mess with you. Let's get into the story. How do you find out that you have these healing abilities? Uh, where, do you see dead people like that kid in the movie? <laughs> Uh, where does it stop? Where does it go? Talk to me. Oh my goddess. That was amazing intro, by the way. Thank you so very much. I may have to hire you when I get back on the road again to introduce me and the band. I, I just, listen, I just want to let you know, I wrote none of it. It's all <laughs> from the heart and the ass. Wonderful. Thank As you. It should be. Thank you. So, fantastic. Where do I begin with the, 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 Okay, so my mother, you know, family lineage, you mentioned it, and it's true. My mother's mother and grandmother, so my great-grandmother, were all mediums. Mm -hmm. One used to channel automatic writing for the Pope. So if you were to go in the Vatican, you would find booklets of automatic writing. Um, unfortunately, I never got to talk to any of them about it, and it occurred for me naturally. I just thought everybody could hear and see beings and... Um, you know, now, what what is for for the you know uh, people outside of this loop? What is automatic writing? Well, I don't personally do it this way. I'm more clear audient, clairvoyant. I do see things. Um, automatic writing is, I guess, another way of channeling. Okay, if I can describe it that way, where you're getting information, but you are taking yourself out of the picture, so you're allowing your body to just, you know, kind of like a meditation, I suppose. Let me ask you a question. When I was in school and I would just sit there and draw and I wouldn't, I wouldn't like start with a plant, like I'm going to draw a house or, you know, whatever. I would just doodle and just fill up the page with stuff. Is that automatic writing or is that just someone who doesn't give a shit about algebra? You know, maybe a little of both. Yeah, because um, I used to doodle a lot in algebra as well. So we have that. Yeah. Once they threw letters into the mix, I'm like, listen, I got a hard enough time with numbers. Now I got to deal with Y's and X's. And, you know, I I'm not a scientist. I'm not looking to launch anything. You know, I get it. My dad was a scientist. Chief yeah. Love brain. And then my well, mom. You come from good stock. You got you got witches. You got science. You got the best of both worlds. So. The automatic writing is in your family uh, lineage. Uh, what else? Well, my evidently my mom's mother used to see several people for healing. And she didn't know exactly what she did, but she would lay her hands on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, whatever their ailments were would, um, well, I don't know. I wasn't there, but supposedly they got better. Right. A lot of times they paid them in um, groceries. Okay. So things like that, because this is all in Italy, by the right. way. Um, hey, you know, thanks for helping me with my back. Here's a box of nutty bars. Yes, yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Right. Probably more like, you know, chickens and eggs and things like that. I got you. <laughs> so, we all have our favorites. You know, what can I tell you? So um, it started, you know, three or four generations prior to me coming along. But for me, my mother was told by her grandmother that she was going to have um, a child like me that was going right. to be able to do what they were doing because they were also psychic somewhat. And, uh, and to me, that's just stepping into another dimension. You know, right. if somebody's talking to me, I literally can look at their body. They'll tell me, they'll come in to see me and I'll say, what is it you'd like to work on? And they might say something, but their body is going to point to what it really is. Right. You know, sometimes they don't even know. 
Um, well, I also well, think what's interesting about you in the short time that I've known you is I feel like I get a vibe from you that you are a skeptic, that you don't just fall in line with stuff and and like you you are thorough in in whatever comes at you, whatever you crosses your path. So, you know, there's so many people out there that hear this stuff and they go, oh, this is a bunch of bullshit. You right. Know, but, but right. <laughs> so it's like for me to know somebody that's uh, involved with this, but at the same time is very quick to call bullshit on things like that's got to be a weird spot for you. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, for me, I'm always going to go to the place of what's going to create greater. And I can always tell bullshit or I can always tell when somebody's, I'm going to put it in quotes, not authentic. Right. And I have two choices. I can either go just for me, just for fun. Don't tell anyone. Now I know this person's, you know, is is faking it or is lying or whatever it is. Right. Um, or I can call them out on it. Right. You know. And I always tell people, don't believe me. I show them how to get yes and no or light and heavy with their own bodies. I'm like, this is what I'm getting. Let's do a double blind. Let me show you how you can do that. And so people walk away with some tools. Right. You can't you can't give the gift, but you can teach them how to kind of be more aware of the stuff that's going on around them, the the gifts that are happening around them, the 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 signs the universe is sending, all that stuff. You know, I I listen. I've I've talked about it on stage. I've talked about it on the show. My parents are two of the most negative and dark people uh, I've ever met. They're I love them, but you know they their love is bad news. They can't <laughs> wait to share it. They can't wait to drop it on your lap. Uh, so this is what I grew up in. This is how I live my life for half of my life. And then I meet my wife and, you know, years down the road, she starts discovering this stuff called positivity, which is like, (laughs) what what is that bullshit? Right. (laughs) And, and I remember we were at a pretty low point in our lives. We had just had uh, our oldest, Natalia. We were broke. Um, I had a good job, but I just couldn't make ends meet. We, we, we were just in a, in a bad spot, a lot of negative energy. Mm -hmm. And she started getting into stuff like that. And she told me once, she's like, try it. You know, you've tried this way your whole life. Try this way and see what happens. And as crazy as it is, because look, I'm a comic. Our job is to call bullshit on, on the things you, you least expect to be called out for bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. That is our job. And sure enough, things start turning around. Um, Opportunities start coming. You know, our lives change because Mm -hmm. of just living and thinking and being more positive. So whatever came down the road after that, you know, once she showed me that gift, I was like, whatever else you're throwing down my way, I'm in. What, What do you got? You know? A lot of people don't even realize that they have a choice. They don't think they right. can be greater. And that's where I start with a lot of people would be like, well, you know, I was raised in this family that all these terrible things happened. And I'm like, you know, my father beat the crap out of us. I was one of six kids. You had to fight for the table scraps because, you know, he wasn't making enough to support us. So my mom had to start working. And I get it. Right. I get it. So I was a little weird because I was always that kid that was laughing through everything. And I didn't know any better. I just figured all families were like that until I actually left my home and went, Oh God, I'm really weird. (laughs) Very different. You know, I hear things that nobody else hears. I see things nobody else sees, you know, my mother, because she knew where it came from. She said, you know, keep it on the down low, but she was like, you know, you're gifted. And so nope, she never told me I couldn't. And I was really quite surprised at how many people uh, weren't the same way. You know, it took a while to find my to find my tribe. What well, um so like what as far as like seeing or hearing things, like what was something that was like a holy shit moment for you in your younger days of kind of learning mm. what you what you're dealing with here, what you well, got. It's interesting because as a child I was never told no by my mother, but I was told no a lot by my father. So eventually I started ignoring the signs and the fairies and all the things. And then one day, it's so funny, I haven't talked about this in a very long time. I was a film producer for a while, or I was a production assistant at the time. So I was learning the the skills 
and I had a degree in broadcasting and communications. That was my first degree. So I carried this little handheld camera and I would follow bands around and um, video them backstage. And so I had to drive to Kentucky for Nashville. <laughs> Today, that'd be called evidence, by the way, those videos. Yeah. You shot. <laughs> True story. You could ruin like 20 bands. Just I releasing really could, you know, I actually have a lot of stuff on, <laughs> you know, Hi8 and that kind of thing because it was just coming out. Hey, stay tuned, guys. We're going to throw that up on the Patreon. Your favorite bands backstage. Get ready. We're going to cancel them. You might actually recognize a few of these <laughs> So, Anyway, needless to say, I'm driving back. I'd had like one beer. But mm -hmm. all of a sudden, I it was like I had, I mean, I, I surmised that I fell asleep. But it was like all of a sudden, I'm going into oncoming traffic with my car. Oh, and it looks like, um, like a freight train coming at me. It ended up being a semi. Don't know if they saw me or not, but well, they honked the horn and I couldn't go one direction. I was going to be going in, you know, off into something else. So I went to the right, not knowing because it's pitch black out where I'm going. So I'm going off an embankment. The car spins around and I end up between a, a post and a utility box thing where my car is like right in between them. No scratches on the car. But I hit my head really hard on the dash. All I know is there was a police officer knocking on the glass. I rolled down the window. I had a huge pip jenny on my forehead is how they say it here in the South. And um, I didn't remember anything. I just said there was a freight train. I don't know what happened. He checked my sobriety. You know, I'd had the beer hours before. Um, so there was, you know, they took me to the hospital. And in the hospital, I started hearing voices. And it was the weirdest, it scared the crap out of me. So I called my mom. And said, I'm, I'm hearing voices. I think I could be schizophrenic or something is going on. And she says, don't tell anybody anything. Don't do anything. I'm coming this weekend. So she comes. She's got a bottle of Chianti, right? <laughs> One hand. She and hangs up the phone and she's like, it started. Let's go. go. Yeah. So she has these little uh, journals when she arrives. And we sit down. And I'm, I'm really kind of broke at this point. I'm in my 20s. And, you know, with three jobs and all the things. And so I haven't probably drank this Chianti out of coffee mugs for all I know. Right. And she opens up these journals where she has written down all these things that I said as a child. And she asked me, what are the names of these people you were talking? Because they kept coming back and talking to me. And I thought it was the nurses and doctors. In fact, I, I said, where's blah, blah, blah. I don't remember their names now. Where's blah, blah, blah. And they're like, we don't have anybody here that, by those names. And so that's when I knew there was a problem. And evidently, I had been talking to them since I was a child because she had their names. She had what they were they were uh, sent to do to guide me and all this weird stuff. And it freaked me the fuck out. <laughs> I what, imagine. What imagine, you know, here I'm in, I don't know. I can't remember now. Uh, 26, 27. And I hadn't heard anything since my father told me it was blasphemous and all the other stuff. Right, right. So I didn't know if I was supposed to embrace it or, you know, is this the dark side, all the things. And oddly, I chose to embrace it. I got very curious about my family. I started reading books about people that did those things. I learned who right. Abraham Hicks was. Mm -hmm. I went to go see her channel. Um, she knew I was gifted. It was just so many things pointing that I wasn't crazy. And yet, you know, I was told that I was making all this shit up and I I knew that was a lie. Right. I knew it was a lie. You know, Which so. that that uh, that instance there in life where you are one hundred percent certain that you know what has happened or what you're experiencing, and people for whatever reason just deny that. That is what makes you crazy. It's like that that tug of war of like I'm not crazy. And then them going, yeah, okay. And then you look crazy. Like, you, there's no, you know, there's no way out of that. It's a shitty situation. Well, you know, I'm actually willing to embrace crazy. Right. If you also think I'm crazy? Well, then I'm not your cup of tea, darling. Go elsewhere, this, you know? That's, that's right. I tell my kids there's leaders and there's followers. And sometimes leaders are fucking nuts. But they're <laughs> leaders, you know? What are you going to do? They're not sitting there in line following everybody else. And they're not really looking for followers either. It's like, if I'm, right. I'm willing to leave everybody behind, including my mother. And I adore her. I moved her in about a year ago. But I'm willing to leave everybody behind and follow my knowing. And that's kind of how I lead my life. That's how I facilitate my classes. I love facilitating. It's like singing. I love singing. I'll sing to a crowd of zero. You know? mm -hmm. right. It doesn't matter to me. If I'm having fun, if 
I'm enjoying my life, if I'm following my knowing that I'm, then everything's cool. I'm down, you know, and I, that's what I encourage all of my clients to do as well, you know? And you mentioned about, you know, how many people don't realize that they have a choice, whether to be happy or sad, positive or negative, uh, confident or worry about everything. You know, I, I always tell people, man, when I, when I worried about running late, I always hit traffic, right? (laughs) When I, when I worried about how am I going to make ends meet, we were always broke Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's, it sounds ridiculous, but it's a switch that you flip because I think here's why I think it sounds ridiculous to so many people is because it's such a simple thing to change, right? It doesn't cost you millions of dollars. It doesn't cost you millions of dollars. The, the effect is immediate and Mm -hmm. like people just, it's too simple for them to wrap their minds around. They go, okay, so I just don't worry about money and it falls from the sky and lands in my lap. No, it doesn't work like that. But it's, it's, I believe like, I'm not a religious guy, right? My parents, we came from Israel. They kept Mm -hmm. kosher. They're religious. They never forced it on us. They didn't really care as long as we didn't convert to anything else. Yeah. As long as we didn't convert to anything else. Oh, okay. (laughs) In that case, yeah. They, they listen, they ain't that fucking uh, secular. Don't worry about it. Uh, so we, you know, I want to take a quick second and thank one of our new favorite sponsors and one of our biggest uh, new supporters here at The Shuley Show, Fume. What's Fume, you ask? It's the best way to quit smoking and vaping naturally. That's right. You don't have to switch to another thing. It's simple. Fume is a Canadian made, Canadian made. First of all, you know it's made with love handcrafted wooden inhaler with no electronics and cores filled only with the benefits of super plants no smoke no vape no nicotine fume naturally helps with uh the hand-to-mouth habit right a lot of porn stars have that nicotine cravings menthol cravings plus it helps with stress they sent me a fume they sent me a bunch of cores to try out i've been trying it out it's fantastic especially when i'm gaming i can't smoke in my studio if i could all my equipment would be shit right now so it's a good thing but when you're gaming i'd love to just sit there and have a cigarette you know i'm trying to quit and fume has stepped in like an mvp man i sit here take a couple rips nothing comes out but it definitely goes in you feel it and i love that i love that it's natural i'm not vaping the vaping thing who knows what the hell we're putting in my favorite personally is the conquer it's black pepper peppermint eucalyptus and it's specifically made to kick nicotine cravings so that's been my go-to and i love it but they have tons of other options uh, white cranberry lemon berry bliss uh reassurance is the one for stress uh, bubbly lime shield it's good for boosting energy they think of it all over there at fume fume also has other areas of support beyond just helping you quit smoking head to breathefume.com and take their quiz to find out which super plants are best for you. It's super quick, will point you to specific plants and the research behind them and their benefits. When you order, make sure you let Fume know who sent you by using the code SHULI, S-H-U-L-I. You get 10% off and they know this show is representing and we're stepping up. So head to breathefume.com slash SHULI, S-H-U-L-I. That's breathefume, F-U-M, dot com slash shuli use my code get 10 percent off and breathe in the benefits of the world's super plants quit smoking and vaping it's douchey we all know it i i think that for me as an adult uh i'm an energy guy now like i that's what i believe in i believe that there's energy out there i believe that what you throw out you get back i believe that uh that yeah that's what because that to me is the biggest difference i've seen in my life rather than praying to somebody or whatever mm-hmm. is like writing down in a journal as silly as it sounds uh thanking you know the universe whoever you want to thank sure. for an abundance of of wealth health you know everything it's not about a wish list it's about what you're what you're deserving of right as long as you kind of walk that line and are deserving of it i I love that you said that i love that you said that so your point of view is what creates your reality y'all yeah (laughs) 
Yeah. That's, that's the thing. You know, your reality does not create your point of view. Just because you were raised in a household, you know, that was highly religious doesn't mean that that's the only choice you have in the world. I mean, I'm, I'm not a religious person either. A lot right. of people call me very spiritual and even that's so limiting to me. Right. You know, I'm kind I don't know. The earth is my bitch. If I'm going to make it <laughs> God, it's going to be the earth because you know, I can feel her heart beating. Yeah. Like I have, I have garbage friends, right. That are like, they're never going to get past this point in life. Like this is who they are. This is how they're going to live. And, right. and I, I came up with a theory based on them, which is when you have nothing, there's always something, meaning they have nothing in their lives, yet they're always bitching about something. They're always complaining about so something's always happened. This one's against me. This one did this. This one. So it's like the less you have going on, the more shit you have in your life, mm -hmm. I feel like. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah I, I, you know, it's so interesting. My mother and I, I kind of thought we were kind of similar. I realize now more and more as she's been living with me that. Well, that's not necessarily the case. I may have some of the gifts from her side of the family, but for example, we had um, this um, really heavy hailstorm. Okay, damaged the roof. Now I had just redone the house three years before, right. so brand new thirty-year roof, and now it's leaking. And right. her car's parked outside. The hail doesn't damage her car at all; just the roof. So my insurance covers it, and we find out that my contractor didn't put the paper. You're supposed to leave. Uh, and so, of course, it blew off some shingles and it went right through. And uh, and it only cost me $1,000 to get a brand new 30-year roof. And they even grandfathered me in because I'd been with them for so long that they replaced all the gutter guard. Everything got replaced. So I'm telling everybody my story. Like, oh, my God, I got a brand new roof. I found out that, that it was messed up because like, how lucky am I? How did I get so lucky? And then I hear my mom on the phone with my siblings. And she's like, oh, you're not going to believe that she's Italian, by the way, y'all. Right. And came here when she was 18. It's just terrible. I have to come and replace the whole roof, the whole roof. Right. It was, it was done wrong. It went deep and deep. It was like. Same story. One's oh, doom and gloom. Right. One's positive. Yeah. And I was like, lady, come on now. Really? Yeah. So, but, yeah. you know, I had to be an allowance of that must be working for her on some level. So I finally got to the point where I'm not trying to tell her anything. I'm like, okay, I get it. You like, she likes that attention of. Everything is so terrible that's happening to us. Yeah, so, well, my, my mom's opening line, usually every call is, uh, hello. And then she goes, oh, you remember we are still alive. That's her opening line. <laughs> that yeah. sounds like a Seinfeld episode. Dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. They, they don't even realize how just amazing they are. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yes. how's it going? She goes. Our children are thousands of miles from us. They don't call us. We call them. And every day we are closer to the end. And I'm like, is dad around? Can I talk to that ray of sunshine <laughs> for a couple fucking minutes? Yeah, and, you know. mother that she still has two arms and two legs. Yeah. You know, I wake up and I'm grateful that my heart is beating without me asking for it. Well. You know, life force through my whole body. I mean, I love that I still have a body. So Listen, weird. if we stop the interview just at where we've been, you have an amazing story. But really, uh, to me, I think the the one of the most uh, insane parts of your life was <laughs> in 2008. Now. Oh, yeah, two, that. Yeah. <laughs> 2008, you are in India. Are you there for a trip? Are you working? What, what are you out there for? Oh, you know, peace, love, and kumbaya, all the things. I was, at the time, I had been following a guru for about 23 years. And it was it's interesting because I ended up, this event actually ended my relationship with him because right. I realized that uh, he was full of shit. <laughs> right, right. Well, it was like, a fucking crazy way to realize it. I'll yeah, tell you yeah. But, you know, I wouldn't give it back now. Honestly. Right. Honestly, I would not give it back now. My capacity is now due to what happened or like off the chain. And I didn't even realize it at that time. So well, we back, but yeah. You know. So you're, you're in India and are you staying at the hotel Mumbai? Oh, you're thinking of the movie hotel Mumbai. Isn't that I mean, uh, yeah. The, what, what was it? The Taj, right? I wasn't at the Taj. Taj okay. got hit later. First, the train station got hit. I was at uh, the Oberoi hotel. 
Okay, so Oberoi. Got hit. Mm -hmm. Right. So now you're in the Oberoi Hotel. You're staying yeah. there as a guest. Mm -hmm. And uh, had you heard commotion going on around you guys? What were you doing at the well, time? Well, we had just gotten back from an amazing day. We were visiting ashrams. We got to listen to Brahmin priests, which they have that little. Oh, yeah. It's very meditative. I still occasionally like to listen to that because there's a vibration to it that my whole body really loves. And so I wake up to kids with that on full blast. Yeah. <laughs> There's the shit out of them. I love it. So when we get in, we were going to go to this Italian restaurant that was outside the hotel, but we got back so late and uh, the staff kind of got used to us. So they were like, right. we have your table ready. So I ran upstairs, put on slippers, right. yoga pants, and had, had, I had my head wrapped. My hair at this time was like down to my ass. Okay. So out of respect, because that drew way too much attention, you know, here with these gurus and stuff and in the ashrams, I had it wrapped. Okay. Beautiful white shawl thing. So I come back down. All I have is my room key. Okay. I don't, I didn't need a passport or anything. They all knew who we were. Um, they loved us. And right. so, you know, we order our food and, um, and it shows up. And then all of a sudden we're here. And my friend, who's a, he's an actor in um, Canada, was sitting next to me. He goes, I wonder what that was. And I said, I don't know. And he goes, I'm going to go check it out. So he goes, leaves, goes around the corner, comes back, sits down and says, oh, the hotel staff says it's a bunch of hooligans shooting off firecrackers. Now, where was my awareness? I didn't think to even ask the question. I just thought, okay. So we go back to eating. I mean, we're all stoned from meditating our brains out. We crazy kids that we were. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't even know if I got the first bite. I could have counted maybe to 15, 20 by the time he had told us that information. Right. And all of a sudden there was this thunderous gunfire is what it was. These two kids that looked like they were, um, I don't know, they were wearing like Nike hats and, but they had arsenal strapped to their bodies and they're just mowing people down. There's like 40 of us in the lobby. There was a wedding that had just taken place. So the whole wedding party got mowed down and I just said, my, my friend, Michael, who my friend from Canada, I saw him get shot in the shoulder and then in his stomach. And he goes, what's happening? I'm like, Michael, get the fuck down now. And I said, y'all get under the table now. And so we all, there were six of us at our table. We all crawled under the table. And I realized later, much later that, cause I was, I was a film producer and I, um, I represented a director that, um, uh, was actually the executive producer to a new HBO show called The Sopranos. Mm -hmm. And he sent me on VHS the first five episodes. And one of them was in a restaurant where, you know, um, Tony Soprano is in there with his buddies and they're, they're eating pasta. And they know there's going to be a hit. They see the guy come in that's going to be taken out. And they see the guy that's going to shoot. And then they make this, you know, eye contact. And he goes, drop. And they all go down. The guy shoots the guy, kills him, drags him through the kitchen, rolls him up in a carpet and throws him in a dumpster. So my thought is, okay, this is that kind of thing. Maybe it's a disgruntled employee. It's the only reason why I didn't have that fight or flight response. Mm -hmm. And so that's what the FBI told me anyway, after I identified all the things, um, the, a lot of things. There's so much to the story that's so weird. I feel like I'm talking about a Netflix movie. Seriously. It's, it's, it's unreal. I mean, it's, uh, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, so I identified them the, the, just at the end of the story. I didn't see them come in. I identify them because I left my body, floated above it and went, oh, yeah, no chance that I'm going to make it because there was all this blood on my white head shawl. And what had happened is they had shot my friend next to me in the head. And that was all his brains and blood on me. But from my POV, I thought that was me. I said, well, that's interesting. You know, and I thought my mother will never get it. My husband will never get it. Right. Everybody else that knows me. Oh, you know, she's always been a happy girl, blah, blah, blah meditation teacher for I don't know how many years by that time. So I don't know. It's kind of weird. I'm still here. Yeah. Took a lot, a lot of healing. And that's where the first <laughs> came from. So soul survival. And, and I mean, to, to, to go through that and then to still come out and be positive about anything in life. OK, I imagine there are people. Listen, everybody handles trauma in their own way. I mean, that was you were involved in a terrorist attack, uh, a mass shooting, mass casualty mm -hmm. incident. 
people you're talking to uh, 30 seconds later are dead in yeah. front of you. Like the brain to process that a normal human being to be able to process that and continue in life in the same way they were before is almost impossible to better yourself. I mean, that takes a lot, right? That, that, that's something that you either crawl into the shell or you bust out, I guess is what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, well, it's interesting because I realize just how freaking weird I am. Mm. There are only four of us survived in that room. And there was four of the six people under my table and only one didn't get shot. All three of us had bullets. I had one that shattered my femur, one that took out my right triceps. I had, I had dropsy syndrome in this hand forever. Right. And one that grazed my neck that if my neck had just been like a half an inch further, that artery would have been taken out. The bullet that went my leg actually was laying on my femoral artery. And the doctors told me when I was laying there, when they got ready to take the bullet out, they said, we have to take this bullet out. But if we take it off your art, your femoral artery, you might bleed out and die. Because I had already mm -hmm. lost, I don't know, two thirds of the blood in my body, you know. And so it was already in, in pretty bad shape, I'll say. And so I, I remember they called my my now ex, and uh, and I told him I said, okay, I'm going under, but this might be it, you know. And I just wanted him to know where to, you know, where the body bag was coming from at this point. Right. So I wasn't sure. Of the outcome and it's amazing how peaceful i was i realize now it's shock you know right right but um what are you gonna do yeah my wife rolled her jeep years ago before we met and it was a really bad accident and she till this day tells me how calm and peaceful it was mm -hmm. as the jeep is rolling over and over which yeah. is crazy it um crazy. <laughs> but yeah what when, when this attack, so they came in, they shot up, and then they left and went on to the other hotel. Or what? Wh how um, long did this take? Those the there were there were ten of them, ten terrorists. Uh -huh. Right. If you guys, if you guys get my book Soul Survivor, I got all the deets. Available uh, on Amazon, by the yes. way, as well as uh, Choosing Happiness, her latest. Mm -hmm. Both yeah, are, which... are best sellers, so check them out. Mm -hmm. And it's getting ready to speak Russian. It speaks Spanish that. and Portuguese, and now it's going to speak Russian. So anyway, Boy, if, any, if anybody needs some positivity, you uh, you watch those videos out of Russia. It is great. It is I just know. one color. I never dreamed in a million years that the Russians would want to be happy. Well, you know, listen, sure. man, we need a happy Ivan Drago. I know it's not going to make a, a great Rocky, but I'd like to see it. <laughs> oh, my goddess, I adore you. You're so funny. So funny. I made sure to go to the bathroom before because I was afraid I'd pee myself. Because last time yeah. I was talking to you, yeah. I was like, oh, my God, I got to cross my legs. <laughs> I've been peeing on myself since we started. So don't oh, feel yeah. bad. Um, so, uh, again, you know, coming out of that and uh, and not only having learned something, but being able to teach people something after that. Ladies and gentlemen, how, how this episode is brought to you by the wonderful people at Blue Chew. You know Blue Chew. Do you hear me? I'm saying Blue... You don't hear me. Let me break it down. Yeah, yeah. Blue Chew is the one. Help you have some fun. It's chewable. Works faster. Blue Chew is a unique online service. It delivers the same ingredients as Viagra and Cialis but chewable form at a fraction of the cost blue juice tablets help men achieve harder stronger erections you're going into combat suit up you want the best equipment blue choose the best there's an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, no. No waiting in line at the pharmacy, and it ships right to your door. It'll help you go into that back door, know what I mean? Uh. It's discreet packaging. Processes, really simple. Sign up at bluechew.com. Consult with one of 
that other licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, you'll receive the prescription within days. The best part, it's all done online. Online, online. Blue Juice licensed medical providers. Work with you to find the right ingredient And straight for your prescription Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here Bluetooth sitting in a fell And Cavendish <laughs> They're chewable tablets They're made in the USA And they ship direct so it's cheaper than a pharmacy so if you could benefit from confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com. Get those details, girl, or actually guy. We've got a special deal for our listeners. Try BlueChew free when you use the promo code Chewy. BlueChew free. Promo code Chewy. Break it down. S H U L I. That's Shuli. That will get you free blue chew. All you gotta do, just pay five bucks for shipping. Don't be a Jew. That's bluechew.com. Promo code Shuli. S H U L I. Receive your first month free. And of course, well, I told you how it's spelled. S H U L I I. Not two eyes. I just did that one for the song. It's just one eye. Thank you, Blue Chew, for sponsoring the podcast. You rock. No stop. No stop. This will probably never air. that how how long for you personally before you could like go out in public or i mean i'm sure there was a time there where you're you're like i'm i don't want to go anywhere no i I was married to a guy that wanted to be the guy that everybody saw as the the greatest husband on the planet little did i know he actually did more interviews than i did Hmm. about what happened before you know before he even got to me Right. All the, all the things. But he was wheeling me around everywhere. Look at the great husband. And here I am wheeling my my wife that may never walk again, which is what they were saying. And right. um, and then at home, he was like, when are you going to start walking? When when, when are you going to start working again? Because I mean, <laughs> I was seriously, you see this table behind me? I don't know if I yeah. can. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was already doing the work that I do. Right. And I was doing more than him. I left right. the film career behind because I was actually making more money and and enjoying it more. And I didn't have to deal with assholes that thought yeah. that they were privileged and all the things. So he's still working for CMT. And um, he sounds like he should be an animal trainer. You know, those animal trainers that are like, Hey, come here, buddy. And then they go backstage and go, get the fuck in the cage. What's wrong with you? <laughs> you know, what are like that. I mean, he totally was, he was used to our lifestyle. Right. And so what it ended up happening was, is we blew through all my money for medical bills. Sure. Even though 80% of it was covered by the insurance, you know, our married insurance. And then once the money was gone, he split. Mm. He basically said, I didn't sign up for this. I'm like, what's that till death do you part thing? <laughs> and he says, if you had died in India, I would have loved you forever. Wow. What a wow. dickhead. I thought, I married that? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, your voices oh, like, didn't help so- you out. Where where were those fucking messages? What well, some gift? Oh, say you it. couldn't have told me to stay in the room and order takeout, and then you <laughs> couldn't have told me not to just to date this guy, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, you know what? I tried to get out of that relationship even b- before we got serious because I thought this guy, he's kind of a douche the way he would. He would speak in poetry and all the things. And I am not that romantic gal. Yeah, I do like a dozen roses occasionally, all the things, but you know. Um... It sounds like a giant poser. He just sounds like a guy who tried to, like, you know, uh, uh, shape shift into what he thought was like the guy that every chick wants. Well, here's the thing he was beautiful. Right. And well, so that's the problem. There's no pain in his life. Yeah. You understand? And you need, you need a fugly guy with some pain. And I dated a lot of fuglies. Here was the thing. I loved a guy that could make me laugh. 
Right. Seriously. So, and didn't take himself so fucking seriously all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. why there's not there's no really funny, good looking comics. You know, <laughs> man. Joe Joe Rogan's the size of a troll. You know, you got oh. Carrot Top's hilarious. He looks like Wendy's from the drive in drive through. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, you name a funny guy, I'll tell you they're ugly. Well, uh, you know. It's interesting because my mother used to always wonder why I didn't date these because you're so beautiful and so intelligent. I don't know why you're dating this. He looks so bitty, bitty, bitty. You know, she had her whatever it was. So when she met him and he was so suave, Rico Suave, he was uh, half um was, I talk like he's dead. He might be, I don't know. But um, he uh, half Venezuelan, half uh, Spaniard. Okay. And a woman actually used him as the cover for one of her romance novels. All right. Oh, boy. And he would walk around. Himself. So much so. And, you know, and I, and I told him, I said, you know, that, uh, but he worked me. I mean, I didn't know he was a psychopath and that's what psychopaths do. They get right up in your face and they make you the center of their universe until they've gotcha. And then they tear you down. Cause they don't Listen, want you to know how if I'm on the cover, if I'm on the cover of a romance novel, it's going to be a real tough time getting me to take out the trash. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, hello. I'm on the cover of four books. Hello. You, you think you just want me out there taking out the trash? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm all of that, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> You're lucky to be with me. Yeah. We we have some uh, listener questions uh, oh, that cool. promoted you were coming on. Um, uh, one okay. of them uh, is from Cowbird. Where is Jimmy Hoffa? Uh, <laughs> you know, do you know? Yeah, I'm not that kind of a psychic. No? All right. <laughs> Well, if Jimmy were to come to me, then I could tell you. But it's okay. one of those things where entities, which are body beings without bodies, mm. I'm not opening a beer. I'm actually opening a San Pellegrino. Even though if I was, there would be no judgment on my Yeah, take a but, shot. Every every time um, you get a dumb question, do a shot. Well, here's the thing. People are always like, well, can you do the lottery? Can you do the da 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 And I'm like, you know, every 10 seconds. I've never actually played the lottery. You can't do the lottery? Play. I've never played it because it's right, too That was question difficult. three. <laughs> so I'll just scratch that off. It was Powerball. Too many variables. Too many variables. Right. So, so I got one one other question. Second okay. shooter on the grassy knoll. Well, somebody wants to know. What are they asking about that? Is there the a Kennedy shooter? assassination? If there was oh, a second shooter. An answer. Okay, let me just see. Uh -huh. yeah. I get a yes. It's light. I don't know if that's true, but I go with light and heavy. Hold on. Breaking news. Second <laughs> shooter on the grassy knoll here on the Shuley show. That's just a question to the universe. I you know, might be off, but I just follow the energy of it. You so know? use that as the clickbait uh, promo. Just a second shooter identified or confirmed. <laughs> and then just put it out there. We'll get people. Oh, my to God. It. So I'm going to be getting so much hate. <laughs> which I put love. It, Anytime uh, anybody judges me, I make more money. It's so crazy. It's, <laughs> it's great, man, because it's so funny. You know, from the world I came from, from the Stern show, uh, I love being a part of it, but there was automatically this part of the fans that their job was to hate you, no matter what you did. The better you did, actually love you. <laughs> so it's funny you say that. I have a gentleman who who reached out to me via social media with a direct message. Was very upset. Said some very nasty things about me, about my wife, uh, and I wrote him back. I said. Uh, would you like to be a part of my show? Um, well, and it's time to do this shit anyway. Yeah, well, he does, uh, and cool. he uh, he replied, and he came on my show, and we talked, and I and I told him, I said, y "You're upset. You're a fan, aren't you?" And he says, "I am a fan." He says, "I'm upset that you're not there anymore." And I said, "I understand. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry that you feel that way, and you're more than welcome to now be a part of my show and come over here." And now. Uh, this psychopath attacks anybody who attacks me. So he's my <laughs> own little pit bull, and I love him. Shout out to Owen. Uh, love Owen! that kid. Woo! I love him. Uh, so listen, I I, uh, I want to get into what my wife has learned through you. Cool. Um, now talk talk to us a little bit about bars, right? Uh, running bars on people. Oh, what, what is that exactly? God bless America. Cause I've been, I've been a part of it 77 times. Still don't know what it is. She's actually keeping count. Uh, no, I just made that number up, okay. but it's been a, but whenever she says, you want me to run your bars? I go, hell yeah. Cause I know I'm going to take a 15, 30 That's, minute nap and I'm going to uh, run. 
it's like the best massage you've ever had with your clothes on. Okay, so I knew a lot about kinesiology. I actually. Studied- By the way, every massage I've gotten, they've asked me to keep my clothes on. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. I have oh, you hear voices. I hear jokes, so well, I have to interrupt and get them out. Otherwise, I shit here. my pants. You that's know, like that's... breaking out in song. If something makes me, you know, I think of a line of a song. I'm just gonna start singing. Wow! Wow! A little prop here. You know. All right, we got to start coming up with some song parodies for you to record. There you go. For us on the show. You know, that's a whole other show we could do. Yes. Totally. Totally could do it because I. This is my big joke about singing. You don't have to ask me once. I'll do it hanging <laughs> upside down, hanging my with my big toe, and drinking a martini. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, right, there's, it's a limitless. There's, there was a comic years ago who said uh, Shuli loves telling people he works. Uh, he goes, uh, Shuli works for the Stern Show, and if you want to know about it, just walk up to him and say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Which I always love that joke. <laughs> This is fantastic. Okay, yeah. so back to the bars, you guys. 32 points on the head. There's different groupings that if you place your fingers in different groupings, it gets rid of thoughts, feelings, and emotions that have kind of been damaging your, I don't know, network system. Yep. You know, you've aligned and agreed or resisted and reacted to things. And um, so you're like taking off all this data from your life, all the trauma dramas. And if you believe in this, your past lives as well. Mm-hmm. Um what I know about it is um, there is, I studied Chinese medicine, of course I did, uh, <laughs> or there's acupuncture, there's also acupressure. So these are little acupressure points that the founder of Access Consciousness, uh, Gary Douglas, mm-hmm. which is it's his fault we're even talking, came up with, he channeled this information. And so you get a bar session and all of this shit that has been keeping you weighed down just dissipates. And every time you get a session, it's like more and more of that goes away. So I've been getting my bars run since 2003. And that's when I got to the point where I just, I don't give a fuck about anything anymore. <laughs> I'm so relaxed. You right. Know? It really it is like a tune up. It's a, it's, it's like cutting anchors loose. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's a combination. Of, so you just, you come off of that table feeling refreshed, mm-hmm. uh, uh, just energized. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's like if I have a fight with somebody, I'm like, come here, let me run your bars because I'm not really having a fight. They just want to engage me in a fight and I'm not willing to go down the rabbit hole with them. I'm the rock in the stream. Throw anything at me. I don't give a shit. Right. But, you know what? This is the coolest part, surely, is now it's proven. There's actually videos out there where they have put electrodes on people while they were getting their bars run and people with severe depression. Maybe it's one session. I had a woman with severe depression. It was like five or six sessions. And the next time she came to me, she was laughing. And yeah. I looked over her head and was like, you know, blah, 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 is supposed to be here. I'm not going to say her name. And I said, do you know where she is? And she started laughing harder. And I said, what happened? And she goes, I finally got it. And I don't know what it was. Right. But, you know, it, it changed her world. Right. I mean, I'm, I teach as many bars classes as I can. In fact, I've got one coming up November 20th here in my home. I can only do so many people because I only have so many tables. Right. Um, but we start at 10 a.m. We're done at 5, 30 p.m. You do not need to be a massage therapist, chiropractor, uh, nurse practitioner. You don't have to be any of those things to learn these bars. I teach it to everyone. It's like my favorite class to teach because they go away with an amazing tool that they can use in their families. If you're fighting with your families, this is a great thing to do is to run their bars. You know, I don't I can't say enough about it. Just Google access bars. Y'all, and you get more than enough information, negative and positive. But I mean, I'm proof pudding, and so surely, so you know. Well, listen, make make your own decision. Like I said, I'd be the first to call bullshit on something, but I love every time she asks me, I jump at the chance to do it. um, You know, because she's touching me, and that's half the battle. (laughs) Um, But for any of my listeners out there who are thinking of going to Rajani's class, let me just throw this announcement out there: No happy ending. All right, so I just want to let people know that because they hear massage table, they get a little weird, my audience. So, um, got it. yeah, listen, we we definitely uh, got to do this again. I'm glad that you did this with me. You you have a great sense of humor. You have you're a great sport. You got a lot going on. Your YouTube channels, uh, RadraniDevi.com is the website. 
and your podcast. Plug your stuff, girl. Go go nuts. So I have this podcast called the Get Happy Podcast with what Rudrani Dainty. Let's do this. And it's it's lovely. <laughs> I interview <laughs> I interview different peeps, and I mean like across the spectrum, kind of like you. Yeah. You know, you you were I was so fortunate. You were actually one of my guests. And uh, you're so easy to interview, too. I mean, oh, please. Yeah, that's, that's, there's no need to talk about me. But if we are going to talk about me, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about how great that interview was. Right. Was oh I fascinating God. or what? You were amazeballs. Thank you. I was Thank so you. impressed by you. And, and you have the sexiest voice ever. Just saying. Thank you. <laughs> Darling. So um, I was- I got that going on. Well, I teach a myriad of classes. I just finished teaching Right Voice for You, which was originally for singers and public speakers, but now it's about stepping into the true voice that you be without any apology, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, I have. We need that in comedy right now, big time. A lot of people. I should do a class for your your friends. Listen, man, don't be afraid to say what's on your mind. There's a lot of comics out there that are worried, that are scared, and and a lot of clubs out there that are, uh, you know, the whole environment's changed. Hopefully it's swinging back, but, you know, you you could be doing a weekend somewhere and (laughs) somebody writes something or yelps something about it to the club, and then that's one club you're never working again, you know? So it's wild. It's so ridiculous. Yeah. What has freaking happened to this fucking planet? I don't mean fucking because I love you, Mother Earth, and you know I do. Yeah. It's just the people in it are have gone crazy out of that was mind. that was the Schweppes talking, Mother Earth. Relax. She didn't mean it. Saint Pellegrino. Oh, Saint Pellegrino. I'm Italian, you know, one hundred percent. So uh, I got to support anyway, <laughs> all the things. But uh, I also teach a class called Relationship Done Different, which I love facilitating that class because everyone has this set idea of what relationships should be and yet look around you how many of them are really working Mm -hmm. so this is another class that gives you a million different tools to create the relationship or creationship i like to call it if you're not creating more with your partner why the fuck are you with them they're probably really bad in bed after two or three years anyway because they've lost interest in you so it's like it's that kind of class foundation which your wife just took with me online we had people from different parts of the world in brazil and i don't know some other places uh, Australia. Anyway, it's kind of fun teaching online because you never know what you're going to get. Right. Um, but that foundation class, it comes after taking the bars class and it's basically the tools to navigate your life. This little yellow book, Choosing Happiness, has some of the 101 access consciousness tools to navigate your life. You don't have to choose it. You'll know within the first two chapters if this is going to work for you. And it's also on Audible. So I'm plugging away. The second book <laughs> is For the Love of Running which is about me running the Boston Marathon uh, three months after my doctor released me 25 months after I got shot. Wow. I was training for it when I got shot and then there was no way I was going to be able to qualify for it again. And I say that because my running speed had diminished tremendously. It was my 10th marathon, my last one. I've done hundreds of half marathons, but I used to run one every weekend. So I'd be marathon ready. But here, here it was. Adidas heard my story and they gave me a hard luck pass to run it. And I did it in about five hours, which is my worst time ever. Crossed the finish line. Couldn't even feel my right uh, foot because it was, it, it, well, it was black and blue. Jesus. So, Because I had only trained up to 14 miles and you're on 26. Not to mention you had just been shot too. Let's well, not forget that fun fact. Yeah, I'd been shot, but you know, almost three years before that, or two and a half. So, I, oh me, please, I I'd still, me. I'd still be milking it to this day. I'd be like, Can yeah. you take out the trash? I'd be like, I was <laughs> shot. I was shot. It was That's resting my on my artery. You want me to take out the trash? You're so funny. I took out the trash this morning. No, I can always tell so when my, I'm with my mom out in the world, and then she says. I'll go away or something to go look at something. And then I come back and they look at me like this. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. You're still here. And I was like, Celeste, what'd you do? Pull the Mumbai card again? What are you doing here? She identifies as being the woman who almost lost her daughter to terrorists in India. Now terrorist attacks are like every other day we hear about them on the news and right. all the things. So, well, yeah, hey, everything happens for a reason. Uh, the, the good comes out of even the worst situations. Yeah. And uh, look at us now sitting here talking. 
uh, with the great Rajrani Devi. Check her out. Thank you very much for coming on the Shuli Show, and we hope to have you back again. And I hope this was fun for you. You're a very good sport. You put up with a lot of horrible jokes. So thank oh, you. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. I would love to be Bach. <laughs> you that, got that it. That was very terrible. So anyway, thanks for listening, y'all.